In this session, we will understand more about this terminology, what research means, what research is not and what are the various attributes of research. By nature, human being is a very curious animal. Every human being wants to know more about the things around, wants to know the reasons behind certain events, wants to know the relationship between various factors. It is this quest of knowledge that has brought our today the very mature disciplines that we see around. And this quest of knowledge is right from the birth of a child. Even a child, if you see, would like to explore the things that are lying around, the toys that are lying around and wants to know more. All these quests of knowledge in the formal settings and in educational institutions is called as research. It is a general understanding that research is something that happens only in isolated corner or in a laboratory or in uh, some specified institutions but that is not the case. We can see that the minor processes in research, they happen even in our daily lives. We will see this with a few examples. Sheila is a girl who is looking for a gift for her friend. She has many options like a mobile or a dress or a purse or maybe a pair of shoes. So she taps the various possibilities checks whether her uh, purse allows to spend that much amount and also sees what is the requirement of her friend and then she goes for the best suitable option. Aparna is a girl who is completing her graduation in psychology. She has two options for her further career. One is to go for PG program that is the masters in psychology and another option she has is maybe work for say couple of years and then again come back to the field of study. So she weighs the two options and then chooses the best suitable option for her in the given situation. Lena plans to spend a few days of a vacation in Madhya Pradesh but she doesn't know anything about what is to be seen over there exactly which is the best place to stay and so on. So she taps the possibilities with her friends and in the colleagues who have uh, has visited Madhya Pradesh earlier. She talks to them, gets more information about that and thus she is able to plan her vacation in the most economic manner and so that she can see the area in detail and with minimum amount of expenditure. We have seen in these three examples that all the persons who are involved in solving some problem uh, which is in their daily life, they are either seeking opinions of others, they are either comparing various options, weighing various options, trying to solve the problem and thus they are able to take a decision. Though we cannot call this as a research per se, but these are definitely the procedures and the mental processes that happen even in the research. Thus from this we can say that research is an activity that is related to a daily life of a, any human being and every human being, every lay person is in that term is a researcher. For understanding what research is, we will begin with what research is not. This will help us in uh, getting more clarity about the concept. We will see two examples. In the first case, Banu has collected a telephone log of the day, how the telephone was used by various people who all had phone on that phone and how many calls were made to whom and so on. This is first example. Second example is Seema she has narrated how she has spent the day to her friends. So Zima would tell about what she has done in the morning, how she got ready, how she went to the college, what lectures she attended and how she came home and how the day ended. So these are the two examples. Now here do we think that the activities that are conducted by Banu and Seema are, can we call them as research activities? 
If we reflect on this, you would know that they are certainly not the research activities. We will see some more points about this and we will see these examples in the light of those points. So we will understand better. Research is certainly not a mere compilation of information. Now the example which we saw, Banu had just collected information, just collected the log. The log is it per se is not the research. The information gathered, if has to be converted into research, it will have to have some more aspects as like who, which was the most used one, which was the most popular one and so on. We will take another example. Suppose somebody has collected data on the usage of the mobile phones and if that is the only information or merely data, if that has to be converted into a research, then the attributes like which mobile phone is most popular, which mobile features are being used to the greatest extent, if uh, age wise are there any differences in the usage of mobile phones these attributes and such attributes will have to be added only then it can be considered as a full-fledged research. If a person is merely narrating an experience or describing a place that also can not be considered as a research. In the example which we saw earlier Seema she had narrated how she has spent her day. It was just merely a description of the activities that cannot be considered as research. It is just a narration. It can form database of a research, yes, but it per se cannot be considered as research. In research one solves problems, but solving the daily problems cannot be considered as research. For example, if a building is to be built, then the making the plan of that building or maybe dropping a child to a school, cooking a dish. These are the daily problems, very small problems. They cannot be considered as research. So it has to be some substantial problem that has the wider implications, wider applications and wider usability to the society. Only then we can consider such problem as research. Solving a daily problem is certainly not a research. The fourth point here is putting one's thought on paper. Now in a daily you must have read articles where for example uh, how the admission process for 11 standard is conducted. Then the author in that case describes the processes and also adds his own thoughts, own comments on it, maybe at times own criticisms. But in this case, it is just merely which one's own thoughts are put in, so it cannot be considered as research. So thus, what we generally feel as research cannot be research if it is merely compilation of facts, merely description of a process or just putting own thoughts are involved. So we will now see what research is. In order to understand the concept of research in detail, we will see a few definitions of the terminology. The first definition is given by Cambridge Dictionary Online. It says, research is a detailed study of a subject, especially in order to discover new information or reach a new understanding. Now here there are some important terminologies in this definition. The first one is a detailed study. So one has to really get into the various aspects of the problem, the various factors that are related to it are to be taken into consideration under this study. So it is just not a very superficial but one has to really get into the crux of the problem. The other terminology in this is the new knowledge. So at the end of a research, one reaches with something new. There is some addition of knowledge in the present repertoire. Similarly, there is the third terminology that is the new understanding. Now here once again, it may not be knowledge always, but at times it may be some 
newer understanding is developed for the same phenomena maybe for the same relationship so the different perspectives get added at the end of a research we will see the second definition now the second definition is given by creswell it reads as research is a process of steps used to collect and analyze information in order to increase our understanding of a topic or issue now in this definition one can see that the steps that are to be followed in the research are underlined so it cannot be a haphazard things happening but it has to be a very well laid down process the sequence is important in the steps it also emphasizes the end product as the better understanding of a topic or the issue at hand the third definition is given by bauda it reads as research means the systematic and rigorous process of posing a targeted question developing a hypothesis or focus testing the hypothesis or focus by collecting and analyzing relevant data and drawing conclusions this definition captures most of the processes in a research for example it talks about systematic and rigorous process so the aspect of step wise process which is once again underlined over here and the most important part is a rigorous process in the research nothing can be done and nothing is done just because one felt it or just by the way kind of thing so it has to be very rigorous process that has been underlined over here another aspect that has been underlined is the proper collection of the data and analyzing it and drawing conclusions from that thus the conclusions are based on the sound data and a systematic analysis of it so thus through these three definitions we have seen what research is we have got some idea about it and we have understood now how it is different than for some pseudo research processes so for better understanding we will now see the various attributes of the research one by one the research begins with a question begins with a problem in the mind begins with a some issue at hand so no research activity is conducted without having either of these in the beginning so the very existence of a research is for solving that problem or for better understanding of a situation so it originates from a problem or from a question the second attribute of a research is it needs a systematic plan as we have seen in the definitions earlier the research activity definitely has a plan and that is which is very systematic so it is no decisions in the research are taken haphazardly or on the spur of the moment so the decisions are very well planned in advance the plan takes care of various logistics that are to be taken into consideration the situation under which the data is to be collected it also deals with the various reasons for having particular choices made in the research process and thus the plan is very systematic and there is a rational behind every choice made research is a very objective process in the sense that there is no place for personal biases and personal prejudices in a research there has to be a sound base of reasons for every decision made in the research and there are logical reasons for every choices made research is a very rigorous process if one decides to use a particular option then many other options are also tapped along to check that this is the best possible option for example if one wants to go for observation then the situation that is to be observed is studied in detail how dynamic or static it is going to be that is first taken into consideration what aspects are to be observed they are listed how will they be observed that is once again worked out and all these factors in totality consider to decide the plan for observation 
and thus it is just a simple process of going and observing say lesson in the classroom. So that is lot of rigorous and laborious process is involved before one actually goes for the observation. Research is a purposive process. As we saw every research begins to answer a certain question. So there is a definite purpose behind any research activity. Like we have seen that suppose in the evening I just go to a market or just go for a walk in the evening. There may not be any reason for it. I may be just pondering upon, just going for relaxing. That doesn't happen in case of research. It has certain purpose and the research outputs are measured in terms of whether it has attained a targeted objective. Research is a testable process. So if suppose I have conducted a research then somebody else is also able to test the same research. Since I give the detailed processes, the detailed reasoning about it and all the possible details related to that research, the other person is able to test it. There is nothing in the research that cannot be tested. So it has to have some empirical data. So the database forms the important aspect of a research which gives the other person the scope for testing the findings. Research is a replicable process. Suppose I have conducted a certain research in one city of the state, another person will have the equal opportunity to completely replicate the study in another state of the country or another city of the country. This will give the scope for seeing how the sociocultural factors are affecting the findings. But the basic study, this is certainly replicable as it is. In fact, it is the responsibility of a researcher to give those many details about the study or the inquiry process so as to make the other person be able to conduct the study in replication. Research is a logical process. The various choices made in the research, various decisions made in the research process, they definitely have certain logic behind the choices. There is logic between the objective and the research method chosen, logic between the research method and the tool for data collection. So thus the process is completely linked with one another with a certain logic than the personal preferences. So thus we have seen there are various attributes of a research process. The research process would be the best if all these attributes are rigorously followed and implemented by a researcher. We have seen that research is a very rigorous process, laborious process, lot of efforts go into it. Why does one is ready for spending that much amount of time, energy, intellect, money? Why does one wants to go for this quest of knowledge? So we will see now what are the various reasons for a person to go for a research. The first reason for going for a, a research is addition in the present knowledge. As we see all the disciplines which are very well matured by now, they were not so earlier. It is only due to the contribution of research and the new knowledge that has been generated, the disciplines have become more mature and they are becoming more and more mature. We can also see that there are many new disciplines that are coming into the scenario. This is because of once again the addition of new knowledge which is the result of the lot of research that is happening all around the world. This is the main reason for which the researches are conducted. Another reason for taking up a research is identification of gaps in the knowledge. Though we see that the disciplines are mature, there is a expansion in the knowledge base. It is the uh, study by the experts, by the scholars that they identify this, there are certain gaps in the knowledge. So this is the output of once again the research. They help in identifying such gaps and then maybe the further generation of researchers 
they work towards filling up this gap and making it a complete piece of knowledge base. Research is also taken up for broadening one's perspective especially for the complex issues or maybe at times some social phenomena, social issues, this aspect is applicable to a greater extent. There are many attributes to a certain phenomena. There are many ways, many dimensions of a certain situation or an incidence. So that it is only the research process that allows one to see the same phenomena from the varying angles otherwise one would al always leave with only one aspect so it is only the research that helps us to understand the process from all the angles and thus in a uh, complete way another uh, reason for taking up a research is improvement of a practice now this is especially applicable for those researchers who are already practitioners. Now as a practitioner one is into the process of maybe using certain methodologies, doing a particular task in a certain way, following a certain procedures and so on. But one may not be always happy with the current choices made by oneself. So through the research one tries to improve the practice tries to use some another methodology, tries to use some other combination of uh, maybe tools and then sees whether it is working out to a better man for getting the better results and thus it helps in improvement of practice. As a part of research, a researcher is expected to know the latest happenings in his or her field and this process indirectly helps one to keep himself or herself abreast with the latest and the new things happening around. In the research process, a researcher keeps viewing the parallel options that the other scholars are following in the field. And this helps him to see his own efforts in the light of what others are doing and thus understand one's process in a better manner. Another use of research is especially in the academics and especially for the novice researchers that uses or that importance is the brushing up the research skills. Now researching is a very high level and a complex intellectual process. Many a times the students are not used to it so especially when they take up a research at the first level in most of the cases maybe at the graduation level or post graduation level the main objective of making them go through the process of research is to brushing up their research skills. This is the first time when they come in, the, in context of the research or in the first time when they have to undertake a research process they have to not only understand it from theoretical point of view but even from the practical conducting point of view and thus it helps them in making a sound base for the research after which they can take up a higher level research maybe at the doctoral level. So thus we have seen that research process though it is very elaborate takes up a lot of time and intellect of a person but there are so many outputs of it and each one of them is so interesting that one definitely wants to give those inputs or one is ready for that rigorous study in order to reach certain intellectual satisfaction. In this session thus we have seen right from how the research is and how it is different from the some daily activities at the same time it is also a part of daily activities. We have also seen how what the research is not, what are the various attributes that make a research a very very special process and at the end we have also seen why one is ready to make those efforts, take those pains for making a detailed study and uh, pursue the quest for knowledge.